would mean this. At first three level, you are like me. At this fourth level, I define my complementarity. I said that if you evaluate other human being at the level of purpose, program and potential, then it turns out that the other is like me. This is what I said is the minimum content of respect for human being. Then there is the fourth point, you know, this competence. But potential is same for all of us, right? But whether we have converted this into competencies or not is the issue. So the natural acceptance is there, the desire, thought and expectation, these activities are there. But whether these activities are falling in order, accordance with natural acceptance or not, that is the whole issue, right? That is the meaning of having the right understanding. So the difference would be only in terms of having the right understanding and right feeling. So what I am saying that there may be difference in competence okay, of the people. But then if there is difference in competen competence, then we will define complementarity on the basis of this difference in competence. For example, if I have better understanding, right, I will deal with sense of responsibility with you. And I will also be willing to share my understanding with you. This is the complementarity. On the other hand, if I have less understanding than you, I will be willing to learn from you, understand from you, take help from you to understand. So when we define this complementarity, this comes under the respect. So this four points, these three points, we are alike. The fourth point, we are complementary. If this is the way I evaluate, this is the right evaluation. This is the respect for human beings. So now you can see whether you are rightly understanding this feeling of respect or not, whether you have the feeling of respect for everyone or not. Right? If you have this feeling, can you share it with others? Right? Does it require any physical facility for sharing this feeling with others? All these issues can now be seen. It can be seen for the feeling of trust. It can be seen for the feeling of respect. Right? If you do that, you would realize that all that is required to do to ensure this feeling of trust, to ensure this feeling of respect, is just to have the right understanding of the relationship. Right understanding of the relationship of trust and respect in relationship. If you have the right understanding, these feelings will be there in you. Right. If these feelings are there in you, you can share it with others. It does not require any physical facility to express these feelings. Right? What do you think? Is that true? Not true. So something which is so simple, we have made it so complicated. <laughs> Let's see. If there is any question on these two, we will take up. Otherwise, we will define the other feelings, the feeling of affection, the care, the guidance. I'm not really feeling comfortable uh, to actually view the other. Uh, 
the other is like me, and then uh, to start respecting uh, on what basis. So you say it's purpose, program, and potential. So based on this, uh, I can now assume that other is like me. So if I give my example, so when in the lunch time when I was going out, then we had a uh, few of the participants whom I met on the tour, and uh, now I can say, okay, these are like me. So I have this initial one in case. Then uh, second one, they, they started uh, telling me, oh, you, you share a lot of these uh, family-related uh, things here. Probably you have family problems. <laughs> so then stop me uh, whether now uh, it is under evaluation or right evaluation. So because of which now, because of the lack in competency in me to know whether it is under evaluation or right evaluation, I cannot define competency. So I cannot say whether I have better understanding than him or he, he has better understanding than me. Basically because he could have different scenario situation at home and I have different. Mm -hmm. So uh, now how to go about it? So we'll take this as the base. Okay? And we start with this. Try to understand from him. If he claims to have right, better understanding. We'll start from, you know, learning from him. Trying to understand from him. Then things will become very clear after some time. If he has better understanding. He will live with responsibility with me. Right? And then he will be able to share his, you know, understanding with me. But prima facie, if I had to make this evaluation, okay, I would say that if he really had a better understanding, okay, a right understanding, then he would have started, right, you know, ensuring relationship with you first, okay. Then ask you what is the problem in your family, <laughs> rather than telling this. <laughs> right. So, the way he responded is not showing this, you know, indication of he's having the right understanding. Instead of making relationship with you, instead of trying to help you if you have any problem, right? It is just raising this kind of question is putting you, you in trouble rather than helping you out. I would say, even if he has the better understanding, I would start from here. I would like to learn from him, understand from him. And if I do that, things will become very clear. If he has better understanding, I will be able to learn something from him. If he doesn't have the better understanding than me, then he will be able to evaluate himself. In fact, what is happening most of the time is that you talk to the other or you say something to the other without even taking the responsibility of what is going to be the implication of it. So that might even be the reason, but I am not saying that is the reason, right? But mostly this is what we are doing today. We are not feeling responsible towards the other. When I am saying something to the other, I don't even look into what is going to be the impact of it. Is it going to improve his competence or is it, you know, that it is going to, you know, further put problem into him. But then yes, I would start with this. Just uh, to go a little further, uh, in case if you happen to meet somebody and then at the competency level, uh, rest are all assured, uh, at the competency level, uh, when you land up having a conflicting ideologies, let's say to the extreme point, one believing in capitalism and other believing in socialism, both are right, but we didn't come together. How do we now uh, have this competency, uh, complementary part uh, being assured? Yeah, that's what we decided, you know. This is what we have been doing right from the first day. We said, let's not take things as given. And don't take me also as, you know, being true. Let's verify, let us explore. 
For example, if I have to evaluate you know, capitalism and communism and socialism, right? One simple test would be that are they taking care of both self and the body or they are largely focusing on the body? Capitalism, communism, socialism, right? All three of them put together. Are they focusing on body or they are taking care of the self also? So simple to evaluate. All of them put together. See, we are respecting the human being. If this is there at the base, then all this detail we can discuss and define the complementary. And that is what we have done last three days, right? Last three days, four days, what we are doing. We are starting with this feeling of respect, this feeling of trust. Right? That you are like me. And now we are beginning to explore. And it has been possible for us to explore right? despite all kind of different backgrounds we have. But that basic respect, or this minimum content of respect has to be there. When I respect you and you know we have mutual respect, then we can certainly talk about any ideology that we have with that feeling of respect. If that feeling of respect is violated, then there is problem. Right? That is one thing. Second thing is that <coughs> it is not making the comparison between two ideologies. It is providing a foundation <coughs> for self-exploration. Right? On the basis of which each one of us can evaluate our ideology. So, may, mo, you know, most of you are able to evaluate right, your thinking, right, your you know, presumptions, your preconditionings, on the basis of what we have been doing in last three days, you know, is self-exploration. Mm -hmm. RCC chairperson's uh, example, he always says that after the uh, lot of uh, deliberation, discussion and when we are not in our coming agreement, says, let us respect each other. Let us uh, disagree to our agreement. No, let us uh, agree to our disagreement. Like so that is very nice way of it. So both are existing with a disagreement. <laughs> Many old things and the concepts are changing now. Like we always used to say, give respect and take respect. But all the beggars are having empty balls. Nothing to give and nothing to take. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, significantly it will change. Now you can see that there are beggars, right? <coughs> so there is no point begging from them. <coughs> Number one. Number two. I have the feeling of respect in me. <coughs> Therefore, I can share with everyone. <coughs> it does not cost me anything. <coughs> so, if everybody has this understanding, everybody will become the giver. Then you don't have to climb up the Himalaya to get the respect, right? <laughs> Which we are doing. We are doing very difficult things to get respect. <laughs> Then we'll help them to think this way. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's what, you know, this right understanding and right feeling is required for everyone. But good thing is that even if he does not think this way, if I have the right feeling and if I express this right feeling with him, he will accept it. So he will have the acceptance, even though he may not be able to reciprocate it. So if I have the right understanding and right feeling, I will behave with responsibility, which will be acceptable to him. But I would also know that he may not be able to reciprocate if he does not have the right understanding. So I can continue to behave properly. Right. This behavior, this right behavior on my part will assure him. <coughs> Only when that assurance comes, then he will be willing to share with me. Then I can help him to, you know, have the right understanding. That's how it can multiply. Uh, but, uh, what would be the state? Uh, as of now, currently, my uncle is having a problem with his spouse. You know. And I try to apply this lens <coughs> and try to approach him, but he's not at all willing to accept, not at all willing to open his bow. But how to go about such kind of people? Because uh, if one is not at all willing to open up, then it is very difficult to approach. And before we could help their competence to be built up, then in due process, if the things have already gone wrong, or the disaster has already taken place, then it would be quite late for us to help such kind of people. So it is sometimes quite challenging to open their mindset the bowl itself in order to give the arm. Yeah, that is true. In fact, you know, people become so hard, hardened that it is certainly difficult. But then, we have to improve our competence. Because deep down, everyone is like me. This we must understand. Lot of things must have happened in between, right? And he has become very hardened. So, probably we will have to work harder with him then. So, we have to improve our things. But yes, many cases it can be very difficult. Because they, you know, because of the kind of uh, you know, experience they have undergone, the kind of preconditionings that they have, <coughs> they might really get very hardened. So it will be difficult to open them up. But then our experience is that yes, it is difficult, but you can do it. So you have to improve your competence. <coughs> and you have to act with responsibility with him. And then after some time we will open up. In fact, our experience is that these people who are very hardened, okay, when they open up, they literally burst. And they are the people who change faster than so called the car, you know, cool people. The change in them is much faster. But initially to open them up, little more difficult. We have to improve our competence to do that. Sir, irrespective of <coughs> overcoming the lacking competencies in the other person, I feel very difficult to overcome my own competence. And when I try to overcome my own competence, lacking competence, it gives me intro it gives me trouble and puts me in unhappiness. So, <coughs> have you any suggestions? to fill up such gaps. Yeah, it is true, you know, that the real struggle is trying to improve one's own competence. That is where you have to work hard. Okay? If that happens, this dealing with the incompetence of the other becomes much easier. So it is true, you know, that this we have accumulated over period of time, so much of it, that first it is difficult even to be aware of them. Then if we have become aware, it is difficult to evaluate them. 
Because if you go on evaluating this, you feel that your whole life has gone west. So you generally run away from it. Shut it down. Okay? Start you know, diverting your attention to other things. So it is difficult in this sense that we have accumulated so much of our desire, thought, you know, expectation based on preconditioning and sensation. You know, that there is so much of garbage there. And that is what is creating problem, right? Basically this lack of competence means what? We have things here which are not in accordance with the natural acceptance, not in accordance with the reality. And that is what is creating problem. This is the only problem, is it? So we have to start facing it. We have to start, you know, delving deeper into this, becoming aware of it every moment, trying to evaluate it. Right? So it may be very painful to begin with. But then that is the status of my being. And I must face it. I must understand it. I must evaluate it. And then slowly make sure that all these desires, thoughts and expectations, you know, which are in accordance with natural acceptance, they have the continuity. And all those which are not in accordance with natural acceptance, right, they start dying out. So that is all that I have to do to improve my competence. Because this problem of competence is only related to this part, right? Having these, which are not in accordance with your natural acceptance, which is not in accordance with the reality. That is the only problem. What else is the problem? But yes, you have accumulated all this over a period of time and you think it is very precious. So you thought that it is all a bag of gold and diamond. But now you realize that it's all, you know, full of snakes and, you know, scorp scorpions. To face this is fairly difficult. But then we have to do it. Because this was all, you know, kind of garbage. I was unhappy. That is the cause of my unhappiness. If it was something valuable, I would have been happy with this desire, thought and expectation. So the major work is with this yourself. And that is with this. And that is with making this in accordance with natural acceptance. So I keep telling three things. The first exercise that one has to do and which I will write down later, little later. The first exercise is to ensure right understanding in oneself. And then making sure that all my desire, thought and expectations are in accordance with this right understanding. This is first exercise. The second exercise is, I become aware of my desire, thought and expectation every moment. Whatever is going on, I become aware of it. The third is, I start evaluating this desire, thought and expectation, particularly this desire. It's whether this is in accordance with my natural acceptance, or it is coming from preconditioning or sensation. These three exercises I have to continually do. So this will help me to clean this garbage. This is what we are calling as self-purification. This is improving your competence. This is the meaning of self-purification. Because all the problem is lying here only. <coughs> body is not creating a problem. You do whatever you, know, whatever you ask the body to do, it does. You are creating the problem. <coughs> what I would do before we close, Define few of these feelings. Okay. Leave it as homework for you to reflect upon. <coughs> so, if you look at this feeling,
look at the feeling of affection. It means the feeling of being related to the other. Affection is the feeling of being related to the other. So you can see that if you have the feeling of trust, if you have the feeling of respect, right? Then, for the first time, you feel that you are related to the other. On the other hand, if these feelings are violated, right? Instead of feeling related to the other, you feel that you are in opposition to the other, or the other is in opposition to you, which is called the feeling of jealousy. Okay. This affection is the feeling of being related to the other. And this feeling, when you expand, ultimately it leads to the feeling of love, which means the feeling of being related to everyone. I will just write that down without explaining much. We will do it tomorrow. So the feeling of being related to everyone. <coughs> In fact, if you ask yourself, <coughs> what is your natural acceptance? To be in opposition or to be in relationship? To be in relationship. To be in relationship with one, any, everyone. Everyone, right? So, any, each one of us want to reach here. But we are having problem maintaining this. So we want to be related to everyone. But we are not able to ensure the fulfillment in relationship even with one. That was the question which we asked yesterday. Right? How many you have just an intention unconditionally? But the acceptance, the natural acceptance is for being in relationship with everyone. This is the feeling of love. We will discuss you know, in more detail tomorrow. The two feelings of care and guidance can also be defined. The feeling of care means the feeling of responsibility. <coughs> towards the body. Of my relative. So if I have a feeling of affection for someone, right, then I will have the feeling of responsibility towards his body as well as towards the self, right? So this is the feeling of care and guidance. And what you will do for taking care of the body? Nurturing and protection, right? So this is called care, the mantra. And what you will do to ensure fulfilling your responsibility towards the self of the relative? Ensure 
ensuring right understanding and right feeling. 